Hello, this is Mr. N, and uh, today we're going to do some more related rates problems. So we have a few here that we're going to work on and review. In this first problem, it says a cylindrical tank is being filled with water at a rate of 200 pi cubed feet per minute. If the tank has a radius of 10 feet, how fast is the height increasing? So let's take a look at what we have here. So we've got a cylindrical tank, so let's uh, draw in a cylindrical tank. And we've got this basic shape, and I will draw the rest in by hand here. And we've got, we are given that it is being filled with water. So these are all our givens. Let's go ahead and list our givens. Water is coming into this tank right here. It's flowing in at a rate. Now it gives me a rate that's cubed feet per minute. So this is what a volume is since it's cubed. So we've got a dv dt of 200 pi. So it's being filled at 200 pi feet per cubic feet per minute. Now, if this tank has a radius of 10 feet, so this radius right here is 10 feet, how fast is the height increasing? So water's coming in here, and we've got all this water in here that's in this cylindrical tank, and we've got something that's increasing at dh dt. And that's what we're being asked to find. So we need to find dh dt. Well, part of our givens is a, is a cylindrical tank, so we know the volume for a cylindrical tank, and that's the volume equals pi r squared h. So let's go ahead and use that, and in our related rates differentiation process, the first step after we've listed all the givens, read the problem, interpreted what is going on and what we need to find, we need to implicitly differentiate each side. So I'll go ahead and implicitly differentiate the left side with respect to time, that's dv dt, and the right side. Now, on the right side, I've got two variables here. But one of them is staying constant. Notice the radius does not increase or change at all. As, I, as this fills up with water, the radius stays constant. So these two are constant in my equation, so I don't need to take the derivative of that radius. So the only thing I need to take the derivative of is this h, and that ends up being dh dt. So now we've got everything that we're given that we can substitute values in. dv dt, we were told that this was 200 pi. And we've got our pi. We've got our radius, which is 10. And then we're going to square that. And now we are just simply solving for dh dt. And we can reduce those out. And so we end up with 200 over 100 is our dh dt. So dh dt, the change in height with respect to time, is going to be 2 feet per second. Again, let me recap why this r, we did not need to take the derivative of this r right here. r is a constant on this cylindrical shape. The radius is not changing at all. So on this shape, this radius stays constant throughout. So there's no need for me to take dr dt, because this would end up being 0. So if you, in fact, did dr dt here and worked it out with a product rule, you'd end up with plus the dr dt part. Well, that whole thing would reduce out to be 0. So it ends up going away regardless. OK, let's move on to the second problem. Slide this up. And in the second problem here, oh, looks like we've got a error. Let's get rid of this. Okay, so in our second problem, we've got a triangle, an equilateral triangle, has sides that are increasing at a rate of 40 inches per second. How fast is the triangle's area increasing when the sides are 100 feet long? So let's examine what we've got here. We've got a equilateral triangle. So let's see if we can get an equilateral triangle drawn in here. I will just go ahead and freehand it this time. And I've got, oops, use my pen. And I've got an equilateral triangle. 
and the sides are increasing at a rate of 40 inches per second. So this is what we're given, that triangle, and we're given that the sides are increasing. So this is a DSDT at 40 inches per second. Now, we are also given that it's an equilateral triangle, so I know that the area of a triangle is one-half times the base times the height. That's a formula that I will be using. And there are other things that we are told is when S, when the sides, we want to know specifically when the sides are 100. Um, this should say inches long. That should say inches in the problem here. Let's correct that. Okay, so taking a look at this, let's analyze what we have. We've got this triangle. This is the height of my triangle. Now, these sides are changing. These sides are changing each at a rate of 40 inches per second. So the area ends up being one half. Well, if I call this base a side S, it's going to be S times the height. Well, let's see what we could do about this height. I know that this is an equilateral triangle, so these angles are all 60 degrees. Well, that would make that a right angle. That would make this 30 degrees in here, and I end up with a 60, 30, 90 triangle. With this being S over 2, there's my right angle, so then that means the height will be S over 2 times the square root of 3, just using a, the rules that we know for a 60, 30, 90 triangle. So we can substitute that in over here as well. Now the reason I'm substituting this all in terms of S is because I don't know what DHDT is. I'm not given any information about that, and if at this point I were to differentiate it, I would get stuck because I have an extra variable there that I don't know how to deal with and I don't have information about. So again, I'm substituting this H right here in terms of S so that I can differentiate both sides and use all the information I have. So this S ends up being, I'm sorry, the height ends up being times S over 2 square root 3. So the area formula, we can clean this up a little bit and say this is root 3 over 2, I'm sorry, over 4 times my s squared. Okay, so now let's, we've set up everything, we have all our information, we wrote down the givens, we need to find, right here, we need to find how fast is the triangle's area increasing, that means dA dt, that's what we're looking to find. Okay, let's differentiate both sides with respect to time. So over here, I end up on the left side with dA dt. On the right side, I'm going to end up with 2 times root 3 over 4 times s times ds dt. Well, that reduces out, so I end up with dA dt being the square root of 3 over 2 times s and ds dt. Well, I know what ds dt? That's 40. They gave me that information right here, so let's substitute that in. I know what s is. They want to know when it's 100. And then we have our constant, root 3 over 2. So working all this out, da dt equals all this. Multiply all this out, you end up with 2,000 root 3 inches squared per second. And this is approximately, if you use your calculator on this, it's 3,464.10 square inches per second. And that's how fast that area is changing. Okay, let's move on to our third problem here that we have. And this is a conical silo. And it looks like we have a mistake here. Let's fix this. This should read... 50 pi. So let's fix that to make that 50 pi. Okay, so a conical silo has water that is flowing out at a rate of 50 pi feet per second. This should say cubic feet as well. So since water is flowing out, that's a volume. So the height of the silo is 20 feet and the diameter is 30 feet. How fast is the depth of the water dropping when the depth 
is 8 feet. Another typo right here. Hmm. Okay, so let's take a look. We've got this conical silo. And it's pointed down. And we've got water flowing out. So water's coming out this way. At this rate of negative 50 pi cubic feet per second. So this is our dvdt in this case. Okay, so these are all our givens, again. And we are also told, we know that the formula for a cone, the volume of a cone, is one-third pi r squared h. We're told that the radius of this is, uh, the diameter is 30, so the radius of this is 15, and the height of this is 20. So we are looking at the situation of a full cone being 20 feet high and a radius of 15. Now, one of the tricks we learned about cones is that we can set up ratios. Now, we know here, if I were to take at this point, differentiate this, I've got two variables that I have to deal with. And so I would have to, again, use a product rule. But let's see if we can make this problem easier and eliminate one of those variables. Because on a cone, we have set ratios. And in this case, for this, we've got and two triangles here where this is 20 and this is 15 from what we're given. This would be R and this would be the height we're looking at. So we can set up this ratio and we could say 20 to 15 equals H to R. Now let's take a look at whether we want to solve for R or H. How fast is the depth of the water dropping? So we are being asked to find dH dt. So that means I want h in my equation. So I need to get rid of the r. So how do I get rid of the r? I'm going to solve for r in my ratio. So taking my ratio, I solve this for r. I get r equals 15h over 20, which is 3 fourths h. And let's go ahead and substitute this in. So the volume ends up being 1 third pi times 3 fourths h squared times the h. Again, since I wanted dh dt, I went ahead and used my ratio that I made for the cone for this right triangle set up in the cone because those are similar right triangles. I set up the ratio to eliminate a variable to make this problem easier to differentiate. So let's continue on. Okay, cleaning this up a little bit, I get V equals one-third, and actually, let's go ahead and just go completely to the end. This is three squared, so nine, and then four squared is 16, 16 times the, uh, 16 times the three here gives me 48 on the bottom. So let's write nine over 48 pi times, this will be H cubed, because we have an H squared right here, and then another H will give me the H cubed. Okay, now we're ready to differentiate. I've set it all up. I've uh, taken my formula, cleaned it up a little bit. So now we're going to say dV dt. That's the left side. Differentiating the right side, I end up with 9 sixteenths times pi times H squared times dH dt. And this is the guy I need to solve for, that dH dt. So we know our dV dt, that's negative 50 pi cubic feet per second, and this is 9 16th pi, and we know our height. They want us to solve this when the depth over here, they gave us this, is 8 feet, and we've got 8 squared here, and then we've got our dH dt. So finishing this up, slide this up a little bit, give myself a little more room. Finishing this problem up, I end up with these reduce out. I get 64, 9 times 64 divided by the 16, and bring that over. We end up with dH dt as being negative 25 over 18 feet per second. All right. Hopefully this helped, and uh, good luck studying your related rates.